if cellular agriculture delivers on its promise, which we don't know if it's going to do yet, but if the technology gets there, then I think we may be heading for something resembling the age of animal obsolescence. Tell that to the rancher out in Montana. Do you think that the meat producers are going to take this risk to their industry, their livelihoods lying down? Producers are already up in arms. Are ranchers like yourself talking about this new cell cultured meat? As I like to call it, fake meat. As president of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, 100% of the places I go, that's what producers want me to uh, talk about. There's a law that was passed in Missouri, mm -hmm. and that law stipulates that in order to call something meat, it has to come from an actual animal. Right. Do you support that law? I do. There'll be other states uh, that I've been told about that will also make the same attempts to clarify what defines meat. We want to make sure that we have a level playing field on marketing and safety inspection. Is your side trying to have it both ways? You want them to be regulated the same way as your meat, but you don't want them to be allowed to be called meat. Well, we don't know what their products are yet. We're not the where these companies are even willing to share what they're doing yet publicly. Is this going to change the world? People love meat. People eat meat. Uh, almost more than anything else on the planet, if we and other companies continue to put our head down and develop sensible technology, the world will change. I think this is going to be the greatest revolution in the history of modern agriculture. This lab-grown meat is not just a plant-based alternative, like the Impossible Burger. There's a technology that exists that allows us to, I mean, for all intents and purposes, have our bacon and eat it too, without any pigs being harmed cultured meat, lab-grown meat, clean meat, whatever you want to call it, is identical to conventional meat at the cellular level, just grown in a lab, no slaughter involved. Its arrival could have massive implications for meat eaters, the US's $200 billion meat industry, and the environment, and it's happening at a pivotal time. We can't handle more agriculture, and this growing demand is asking precisely that, and we're gonna reach a breaking point. All right, Chef Chris, we're going to cook up some cells. I like to call it chicken. Well, we'll see if it tastes like chicken. This is our chicken bite. We've got some breading on it right now. Bam. All right. It's kind of fluffy on the inside, kind of airy on the inside. Lab-grown meats start with a small cluster of cells that, like an embryo in a womb, needs proteins and nutrients in order to grow. The process generally begins with taking a tissue sample from a living animal. From that tissue sample, stem cells are isolated. From there, a nutrient-dense serum encourages the stem cells to multiply. Once a mass of cells is formed, it's fed with proteins that prompt the cells to differentiate into muscle and fat cells. After some time in a cultivator, a mass of cells resembling raw minced meat can be harvested and prepared. All right, Chef Chris. The moment of truth. Let's do this. Here she is. Mmm. Tastes like a chicken nugget. You did a great job as a chef with the exterior, but the interior is nice and soft. It's kind of spongy. You like the chicken? It was pretty good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have to say it tasted like a chicken nugget. Good. We'd rather people just say that than anything else. Almost be surprised that it's so normal. How long will it take before it's on someone's plate at a fancy restaurant yep. or at home. The chicken's gonna be happening uh, hopefully before the end of the year. So we're talking- Before about, the end of the year? Yeah. We only have a few weeks left. I know, I know. Where? So we're talking to a handful of countries right now. The, the, the key limiting step is the regulatory. The regulatory. Regulatory environments didn't contemplate the idea that you would be able to serve meat without killing an animal. Last month, the FDA and the USDA agreed to share regulatory oversight of lab-grown meat products in the U.S. So we just inked an agreement with a company in Japan, and they make this very, very high-end product called Wagyu, where we're sourcing cells from these phenomenal cows, and then using the cells as the building blocks to make 
a hamburger that we're hoping to put out in the next year, year and a half. What's the biggest technological hurdle you have yet to overcome? Well, it's probably the structure. You know, we didn't give you a chicken breast, we gave you a chicken nugget, mm -hmm. you know, and we're not gonna come out with a steak, we're gonna come out with a hamburger. Mm -hmm. So it's a structured stuff. It's trying to figure out a way to weave together the muscle and the fat so it, it looks like a steak would look. Just says it may be more than a year away from having its burger. But we learned that a startup in Tel Aviv, Israel, may have found the holy grail of cultured meat production, a steak. The world's already seen hamburger meats, mm -hmm. but this is different. Yeah, that's different. Those are pieces of steak. We believe that uh, for um, cell cultured meat to be a real option in the market, it has to reproduce the texture and the experience of the conventional meat. So this is uh, Gertrude. What you can see in there are cells, which are actually real cow cells, which we have uh, isolated from a real animal. Is the cow still alive? And we don't hurt the cow. The conditions inside these refrigerator cows are meant to replicate the bodies of living cows, where cells naturally multiply. So this is actually the, probably one of the, you know, or maybe the first piece of beef tissue. After roughly three to five weeks in Gertrude, these small beef pieces will grow into a thin slice of steak, roughly the size of a credit card. Most cattle are slaughtered after two and a half years. What we're going to try today are the first thin slices of steaks. Each meat cat you'll test today costs approximately $50 a piece. The test and flavor are still, I believe, 60-70% on the way toward the, our goal. You've gotten the texture pretty close? Yes, not bad at all, and you can judge by yourself. When we arrived, Amir Ilan had already marinated the lab-grown beef. And here it is. Yeah, so the beef with uh, mushrooms in teriyaki demi-glace and some microgreens with truffle soy vinaigrette. This looks beautiful. Thank you, chef. My pleasure. Well, let's give it a go. It's pretty good, yeah, I have to say. It tastes pretty close to a regular steak. I'm not willing to say this is the best steak I've ever had in my life. Pretty good though, <laughs> and, but it passes. Olive Farm says it will take at least two years before its product is commercially available.